Ladies and gentlemen, on April 24th of this year, I released a video to this channel about Nate Black leaving Channel Makers and the circumstances around that departure. Well, in the comments, a lot of you guys were tagging Sean Cannell and Think Media about Nolan Molt leaving the Think Media team. And Nolan had just created a video. There was a whole lot of questions that were kind of up in the air. After that video was released, Sean reached out to me. We had a very long conversation about media companies and the good, the bad, the ugly. After I had that conversation, I realized how much value was in our discussion and Sean agreed to come on this channel as a guest and discuss some of the things that he's been going through, some of the things that he's been thinking about in terms of media company growth and business growth. And in this video right here, this is the first interview that I've done on this channel and we go over it all. So if you guys want to hear some great wisdom, you want to learn how to grow a business, you want to learn how to build a media company, this video right here is the one to watch. Let's get into it. Sean Cannell, it's a pleasure to have you as my first interview on the Rafiti channel. So thank you very much for joining me today. Well, Scott, I'm a fan. I mean, being able to hang out with Uncle Raf with your hot takes on the creator economy and Twitter video. Like I'm out here trying to chop my videos up and get them on Twitter, you know, like just lead the way. You know, it's funny with the whole Rafiti channel. One of the things that I have really been leaning into is like my experimental side. Like uh, one of the things I've never shied away from is is taking risks, putting myself out there, trying new things. And so, yeah, the Twitter video not working out so great. LinkedIn videos doing decently well right now, though. So I'm here for it, man. I'm here for yeah. it. I love it. Okay, uh, so first question I got for you. I want to kind of hit hit the ground running, come out swinging. What are you most afraid of in 2024 when it comes to the creator economy? What what scares you the most? Um, I think what scares me the most in the creator economy. Listen, I I think just to define my personality and perspective yeah. is I have a I live in a tension, and I think this is what good business owners do. I think I heard about it in Good to Great. Uh, Jim Collins, and he said, you know, good leaders cast a vision and have unshakable optimism. While they face the brutal facts while having unshakable optimism. Mm -hmm. So if I think about the brutal facts, I think about um, influencer fatigue, just burnout on influencers. Um, there's been some good videos about people talking about the flaw in camera reviews. Like, so even on the tech side of things that like with the flow of brand deals and sponsorships, and one of my friends, Ravi said, we're living in a trust recession. So, so like, where is that some of those things going in terms of trusting influencers and brand mm. deals? And because we help creators, you know, it's, it's, it's identifying the enemies and challenges. Um, Speaking at my event recently, I identified three big challenges. One is competition. Rising competition is no doubt, uh, no doubt about it. Um, the other one was uh, trust. Uh, authenticity is the new currency, and not just like Sam Sulek videos, but it's like, yeah. Um, I think you have to think about your approach, your messaging, what you're doing, because there's just massive mis uh, mistrust is is the enemy, and and uh, mistrust because of COVID, mistrust because of um, the government, mistrust because of fake news, mistrust in general. And so then you pull that in, the, you have got to be aware of that. And then, um, you know, I think it's, it's hearing on the one hand, uh, Benji Travis, you know, such a good friend, and we uh, work out kind of weekly up here in the Northwest, like five minutes away from me. And, and uh, he's talking about how for a lot of food creators or some shorts, food creators, vertical videos, like brand deals are drying up for them. And at this exact moment. So I think, you know, just the macro economy, but then the whole other tension is if you still study the math, the next three years are going to be the best three years in the creator economy. It's going to double according to Goldman Sachs, the total addressable markets expanding. Um, small creators are being recommended on the homepage like crazy. I'm seeing it all the time. And I did a survey and other people are seeing that as well. And so it's a very interesting moment where I think you have to be really aware of, of the challenges and of what's happening. But I think you also really got to guard your mindset because those who stay uh, positive and stay on offense and reinvent themselves and learn new skills, I think can really thrive. And here's my perspective. This is like one of my favorite analogies for business in a season that I think we're going into is from Forrest Gump. And so Forrest Gump starts a shrimp business and with all the competition, they're not getting any shrimp. 
So he's out there grinding, not able to break through. But then a storm comes one night. And if you remember the scene, Forrest is like running around the boat, like ropes, pulling on, you know, the sails. And Lieutenant Dan is at the top of a sail. And he's like, God, if you get us through tonight. And they, they weather the storm. And then it cuts to the next day and they're trolling along the bank and everybody's shipwrecked. And then they put their nets down and then boom, um, they they have massive amounts of shrimp and the whole company starts to scale and blow up. I think what's gonna kind of happen is I think this is just a season to be really conservative, thoughtful about how you're managing your resources, thoughtful about, like people in general, views are down. That's what I think about. I'm like, whoa, like for a lot of people are reporting views are down. I feel blessed though, because having been on YouTube for 17 years and doing video for 20, I'm like, bro, freaking I'll take, a lot of views like our channel views doubled during the pandemic literally we did nothing mm -hmm. else they just yep. doubled we had 125,000 daily kind of ranked videos it was a quarter million just from doing nothing and a lot of people we coach when that dropped they go what happened did, did i go people just started when they went back to work like oh some i, I was getting 10,000 views now i'm only getting 4,000 you're still getting freaking 4,000 views, dude. What are you complaining about? Like, so yeah. I think it's like keeping your head on straight. And if you can weather the storm, I think that shakings like this actually are an opportunity for someone listening to this to just think about if I can be smart, if I can run lean, if I can weather this, if I can innovate, if I can, you know, still maximize. When was it even about views? If we're chasing vanity, that's a thing. But like, what about your business model? You know, what what can you do? And um, and then of course there's all kinds of fear in the system, anyways, because election year and all this other stuff. Yep. So it's like, uh, that's those. It's kind of the mix of things that I'm feeling. And before we hit record, I was like, you know, any given day, I have like I'm at, I'm simultaneously living at like a hundred percent faith, optimism, and future is bright. And like equally 100% like paranoia, like, I don't know, maybe the whole thing is about to just crash. Like, and that could be like globally, nationally, but even kind of create our economy. So it's a very emotional thing. So I think emotional management, kind of stoicism, focus uh, and, and mental toughness is a pretty important thing to have right now. Man, uh, you touched on so many things there. I'm going to check them off here one at a time. But, um, you know, one of the things that I've realized, and, and you, you hit the money on the head, you hit the nail on the head. The sentiment among the populace is that things are kind of unstable. There's a lot of like uncertainty. Uh, we've seen the real estate economy, the real estate market just kind of completely flip on its head. I remember in 2021, I had a whole, whole lot of friends who were in the real estate industry and you could sneeze and sell a house. You know, it was like they were selling houses all the time. A lot of YouTube channels popped up living in wherever and they would explode and they'd sell $100 million in, in homes in, in a year. And then that flipped and a whole lot of people got out and the people who stayed are the ones who are weathering the storm. Those are the ones who are developing that fortitude. Those are the ones who are going to be successful over the long term. And I think the same goes for YouTube, man. Like, again, you've been on YouTube for 17 years. I've been on for 10 years. Uh, we've seen ebbs and flows. We've seen, we remember Admageddon? Admageddon, like, destroyed people. A lot of people left during Admageddon. Mm -hmm. And, and the people who stayed are the ones who now are, are leading the charge. One of the things you talked about, though, uh, burnout, uh, I got a quote here from Neil Mohan. So there was an article they did a couple of days ago, and um, the article says, many creators have left the popular video platform due to burnout, but this is something that doesn't scare Mohan. I know he says, uh, I quote, I, I know lots of creators who've chosen to either take a break or pursue different ventures. Some have moved from in front of the camera to behind it. Others have expanded different types of businesses from their YouTube experience. This evolution is natural and positive, driven by the success they've achieved on our platform. So he kind of skirts around the actual issue of burnout in saying like he sees it as a positive. Do you feel like YouTube helps <laughs> prevent creator burnout? Or do you feel like just being in the weeds, watching your numbers all day long creates more of that like ecosystem of like uh, anxiety all the time? You know, What's kind of actually interesting is, is if we're thinking about media company, and that's something I feel like we've kind of, in a way, intentionally went into and stumbled into as yeah. well. Um, one of the conversations we've had on our team too is what is even the life cycle of a creator? A creator might eventually go independent and still have some energy, but even if, if you were thinking about it from a pure talent standpoint, like how long can talent last? It without them also, and this, let's go business owner. 
we've been thinking about lids, leadership lids in a company. Like if you just are doing the same thing day in and day out, is there ability to advance in the company and at a hyper growth SaaS company for sure, because maybe there's just so much expansion and there's venture. But if you're also like some level of a small business, you always want to say like, man, you can just keep going up in this company. But the other question is like, maybe not though, because like if the executive team, so yeah, you could get promotions, you could get raises, you maybe could get more responsibility, we could be creative. So just thinking about like how, how, how many years can you do this stuff? And I think one as a, as a creator that wor works full time for a media company. For me, I think one of the ways that one, I would say that there's probably been times where I just work in burnout or I am burned out yep. and I didn't even know I was, <laughs> or I'm trying to understand what exactly this would feel like. And I'm like, this sucks. I don't want to do this. I'm very tired. And then maybe just the way I'm wired is like, what am I going to do? Complain about it? Like I still kind of got, you know, for, <laughs> get up and, you know, just mind over matter or whatever. I don't know if that's healthy or not, but just thinking about how I'm wired. But then I think the other thing is me going through different seasons and cycles. If it wasn't for, and this is my personal story in response to burnout. If it wasn't for, I uh, think media reinventing ourselves and me going from the solo creator, I pro like, this is extreme to say, I don't actually mean physically dead, but I'd be dead if I just stayed a solo creator. Yeah. If I actually stayed small, if I didn't grow the company and expand the media company, I would have died also because of health challenges. I started because of being the shooter, editor, microphone, uh, Adobe Premiere, thumbnails, optimization, uh, every friggin' thing, right? That's what all solo creators do. And so uh, maybe not all business owners outsource editing, but I just do, I did all the steps. One, as I start scaling, when I went full time, I hired an editor that saved my arms, wrist, and hands. I've dealt with RSI, repetitive strain injury. I thought it was carpal tunnel, not carpal tunnel, I don't think, but more like tendonitis, tendinosis, nerve entrapment, editing at a desk from through my 20s up to 32. I've dealt with extreme levels of chronic pain in my early 30s, and now at 40, I've been in the gym, uh, I've done Regenex. I've done some, I'm doing all kinds of biohacking stuff. And what used to be a pain at a 10 in my arms at times and hands is sometimes zero and other days one or two. And it's still kind of a journey, but I'm thinking about the long haul and thinking about health. Punchline is if I didn't find a way to uh, distribute the work, but keep the whole thing going. Uh -huh. Like that's the scary thing for the solopreneur or the scary thing for the small shop because even seasons where I maybe needed to take a little bit of a rest or, or switch the work I was doing. So I guess on a uh, uh, long answer to your question, but just thinking about burnout, it's like the way I've maybe evaded, evaded that is because I've innovated and allowed myself to change. And then also to build something big enough that you have a big enough bench. That's, that's just probably, you can summarize it saying that way. Teams need a big bench because players get injured yeah. and players get injured and they might be out for a season but you still might be out from being on the field, but you could still be coaching. You could still be running plays. You could still be running strategy. You could still be. And so definitely the way we've made it through this past season and even based on our model um, has been very helpful. So I have deep empathy. It, there's no question in my mind when it says like certain creators are quitting when they are the day in and day out front facing creator, that um, knowledge worker, I, I'm talking to a roofer right now, the roof paneur, and a guy that goes to our local church, awesome guy. He's kind of, he's built an eight-figure roofing company, but he's getting into content and now helping other businesses. And uh, he's, you know, ripped. He's always in the gym, former Marine. And he's uh, he's been like, bro, I've done hard work for a lot of years, but now that I've almost delegated my whole business out and now I'm doing this crater work, it's different but this is freaking hard, dude, it's taxing. I'm like, I didn't even actually do work today, but I'm more exhausted than I've ever been. And I'm like, actually you did, it's, it's knowledge work. It's a whole different thing. And you actually, you could probably go out and do physical labor for eight hours or more if you're fit, but you can't necessarily do knowledge work for eight hours in the diminishing returns. They say about four is a peak. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of times where I think I have pushed eight to 10 and pushed my brain and, and so anyways, I think that um, none of that's a surprise. Like this content creation thing, especially over a long time horizon is uh, is no joke. 
And so, um, yeah, I think you need a new set of tools and, and you need to, at least for me personally, it's why I take health, fitness, nutrition, rest, and I'm doing more so too, especially as I age, but I think just in general, uh, mental health, spiritual health, that's a whole arm of, I believe, my l longevity for what it's worth and being able to at least see burnout and back off of it, do some things. And um, that's a lot of pressure for, for creators because you just wanna do your art, you wanna create the algorithms pulling you to beat your last best and there's a lot of other factors. It's this, this stuff is no joke. I know you're a religious guy. I'm a religious guy too. You know, one of the things that I've kind of been thinking about a lot lately is this concept of why we're here on this earth. How do we advance? How do we grow? One of, one of the things that I've realized in the last few years is that God wants us to have problems because he wants us to learn how to solve problems. And being an entrepreneur, I know you guys are seven closing in on eight, or are you over eight figures now? Yeah, we're at uh, multiple seven. We've multiple never seven. crossed eight annually. Okay. Uh, this year. And we might this year. This yeah. year. Okay. That so looks you, like we're on the way there right now. You guys are getting close to eight figures. We're solid seven. I, I, I've realized that the commonality between all entrepreneurs is that when we see a problem, we don't hide from it. We don't try to protect ourselves from it we jump head first and try to solve it. And people who understand that uh, problem solving is how you grow, it's how you advance. You said innovation, you uh, I wrote this down. Innovation is what you said when, you, when you're getting close to burnout, when you're feeling burnt out, uh, you innovate. Burnout is a problem, how do you solve it? I don't solve it by running and hiding, I solve it by solving the problem of what is causing it. What's the root cause? And I think that, you know, I've, I have solved so many problems that I've gotten to the point where I have so many skills from the problems I've solved that it's worth seven figures in annual revenue. I wholeheartedly believe that that we're here on this earth to learn how to solve problems. And um, I mean, that's a big part of it. So very cool. Okay. Y you touched on media companies, and this is definitely one of the things I wanted to talk about because I've been given a lot of hot takes on media companies. Obviously, we saw the... Uh, you saw the Nate Black video. Um, there was a bunch of people who tagged Think, Think Media in it. Um, there's a lot of uh, media companies that are kind of doing really well right now. There's a lot of companies, media companies that are struggling. Daily Wire has gone through their share of of things. Um, Patrick Bet David, you know, he's had his growth challenges of valuetainment. What's your overall feeling on, on the media company approach to YouTube? Do you feel like it's a viable option or do you feel like it's never going to quite reach the, the level of like, say, an MSN? NBC, Fox News, CNN, you know, that type of uh, empire enterprise. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, so a couple of thoughts on, on media companies. Um, it's such an interesting place that I feel like my perspective is in, and I think it's probably best to kind of just tell the story um, and then maybe have some takeaways. Like a lot of the way I operate is I try to get enough clarity and vision for the next season, um, set some goals, pursue those goals, so it was kind of like I saw the potential of YouTube, specifically in my case, being a videographer, video production, video editing, and learning about affiliate marketing and learning about search engine and ranking. A lot of people would know if they know us well that like if I would lean on evergreen search-based videos connected to passive income streams as um, the eighth wonder of the world. Because people might be like, is passive income real or not? I'm like, well, I got receipts to say it is really real. I've got 10 year old ranked videos with people still not just getting some AdSense, but clicking affiliate links. And for it, there being so many, of course, other ways and to earn money. And, and affiliates can also be so small and quote unquote hard to scale, maybe parabolically for like a kind of lifestyle business, what you could build up with, you're not doing customer service, you're not doing, you know, whatever, based on ranked videos plus affiliates. So in one sense, and you know, without even going into my story with my, you know, my wife almost dying and health challenges and the motivation of the whole thing being like, first, I just got to support my family. I could see YouTube being a way of actually being able to work from home. I'm not trying to travel the world or get fame and fortune and followers. Sure, I have those motivations too, because like let's, oh, influencer, but literally just kind of like, this could be a real practical way to truly work from home and create freedom. And then reaching that goal after it being a side hustle and then going full time 
I think the way I'm wired is, is, uh, is stewardship would be a big word. Just always mm -hmm. like stewarding whatever's in my hand for this season. So now what's in my hand? Well, now we're full time. Now we got some passive income. Okay, so in a way it's like you've cr climbed to the top of a mountain, but then you realize you're at the bottom of a mountain range as you look out on the horizon. For example, we hit six figures, basically just my wife and I and some contractors um, not no entity, <laughs> like it probably should have had one, not even an LLC. Like we didn't even start an S corp until 2019. So we get to six figures talking about tech, ranking videos, Amazon affiliates, a little bit of ad revenue, Amazon affiliates. Okay. But then once I get there, at least personally, I see a fork in the road. You mentioned faith. It's like, okay, my wife and I more or less, like we're taken care of. Like if we just maintain this, like our needs are met the way I'm wired with my values and faith is like, but is life just about your needs or is it about impact? Is it about leaders ask how far can we go? So just being at the top of that mountain, then I'm like, okay, well, could we scale? Could we grow more? And so you take early on, uh, I had hired Omar El Takori, you know, incredible person. I've known him for a decade now plus. And, and so ran into each other at the gym and was like, man, things are getting, I'm, I need help. Like I'm actually kind of busy now as a solo creator. Oh, you, you're able to do some stuff on the side. So at first he's a shooter video editor. Then I'm like, let's sit down and shoot some videos together. Like you want to come on. And, and actually, if we really go through this narrative, I saw, um, I'm watching Grant Cardone and Jared Glant on a show called Young Hustlers. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. It also makes sense. Like I had no idea who Jared was, but I saw Grant because of 10X rule and my brother talked about him and whatever. So I was like, okay. And then I also thought about succession or thought about, you know, if I, again, if I get injured or whatever, like what if we built up other leaders and the language media company at the time wasn't in my vernacular, but mm -hmm. so Omar and I sat together in a couple of videos and then eventually it was like, he started making his own videos. And, um, and then there's been other great people over the years, but here's my point in saying all that is it's been like very, organic then we got to the top of another mountain like okay what if there was other content creators too and compared to daily wire who at my understanding is with a large amount of investors from like the get-go they had a vision of what it, it was they wanted to build you know knowing patrick bet david he starts seeing what pbd podcast could be but then like okay we'd have multiple people or thinking if you're gonna start a news network, like if you start truly with the end in mind, then like at the genesis of it, you're like, yes, I'm building a news network. I'm building CNN. Or if you were doing comedy, I'm building SNL. No doubt about it, early on, there was weird analogies, like, you know, not only as a Christian, but you know, I grew up listening to hip hop, still do. And, and so <laughs> like Macklemore said, when Wu-Tang raised you. And I thought like, oh yeah, like Wu-Tang, man. Like they were like, they, there were a bunch of creatives, artists that then they put out some albums. They really got known 36 Chambers. They also did some solo albums. And I've put that story out there on some vertical videos. Like, yeah, maybe we could kind of be like that. Like, and even as Omar was growing, it was like, yeah, I think media is is one of those things. And, and even to this day, then some people have left and launched their own thing like Omar has. And as Raekwon did as well. And yeah. there's some different emotions and things within the Wu-Tang as well. And they've sometimes reunited on some tours, but they have they went through an era of a couple albums together. They did other projects. So it's just, I was kind of looking for handles like that. Like what's Grant and Jared doing on Young Hustlers? And, uh, and then you even bring in the ministry influence, which success without a successor is failure. And I saw too many senior pastors having so much experience in ministry start thinking about what their next season was too late. They're, they're 55, 65, and they're like, oh, now me start building up my success, successor. It's too late. This is Moses and Joshua. You should be building up your successor for decades, potentially. And that wasn't that. It was even in a conversation with anybody that's been at Think Before, like they're the successor. But it was just knowing that like, that's what I'm aiming for was like, who could, you know, how could we do these different things? There's a book called Built to Sell. Never read it, but I read the cover and I'm like, that makes sense. My company's not built to sell. What if it was? And so if it was an SNL brand or a CNN brand, a personal brand, would it be built to sell? So I just had these different things that we sort of were aiming at Fast forward to today to answer your question, do I think media company is is viable? Bro, I have more questions than I have answers. I'm like, I don't know. Like, and and I'm like, 
you know, here we are. There's been some transitions recently and um, we got some new people coming on and, and we're just uh, back to the stewardship thing. I'm just like, where are we now? And a lot of what I will say, and I think this is a good reason to be in entrepreneurship. I am solving much more for the journey, much more for the love of it. Definitely don't love it all the time. It's certainly hard. I like being creative. I think I've, man, if you don't like it, you probably should figure out how to get out relatively quickly if you continuously are being ground down by it. I think it's so blessed that we get to do what we're doing. Money is not my number one priority. I mean, we were talking about revenue versus profit before the call and, <clears throat> and while worse, doing well and set up and we have some different things going. I'm not trying to squeeze as much money out of the company as possible. We got 25 W2s, we're hiring other people. We just added healthcare. I'm trying to like create a community and, and build a good culture and experiment with leadership and incredibly blessed to be in the creative economy and try to add new skill sets and see this all as learning in a lesson and try to have fun doing it. And so to your point, one other final bit about media companies is I would say a couple years ago, I looked at Ramsey and Ramsey personalities pre Chris Hogan having an affair and then that whole thing. And Ramsey and Ramsey personalities pre a couple transitions with Christy Wright and Anthony O'Neill, who are both incredible people, love Ramsey, know them personally, you know, great stuff. Obviously different people, it's different stories and not the same as the Chris scenario, whatever, you know. And then Daily Wire and Valuetainment and, and look at a Daily Wire like, oh, look, like this is just gonna be media company bliss. Like this is just what you do. Like, hey, like this will be cool, you know, and like maybe we'll do something like them. And then, you know, you fast forward a little bit and Jedediah, Bilya, you know, I was like, oh, cool. Patrick's building his team. And then she didn't work out, which like, makes sense, you know, like that people will come and go and not everything's a fit. And sometimes I think we overthink that and we get like overly weird about it. Like not everything works, like things happen. Like not everything's a conspiracy. Well, it could be, but you know, different things. So <laughs> so then a couple years ago, I, I look at all that stuff and I was like, hurrah, media company. But then even seeing our curve, I'm like now Candace Owens, that's interesting. I think Patrick's also testing different things. He's got different people that maybe stick, some don't. Um, and then you see all kinds of, whether it's in the creator economy or SaaS company, all the layoffs that are happening right yep. now, all the uh, jelly smack and different things. And so I think tube, that- Too buddy, too buddy, man. I mean, huge layoffs. And I think that in Buzzfeed and, mm -hmm. and media brands, that maybe look good on paper and raised a bunch of money. And a couple of years ago, you're like, that's the model. And that's interesting because you never know what's going on behind the scenes. So if you're following somebody, you're like, oh, that looks so cool or whatever. And then maybe it isn't, you don't really know. So that's why I would say that, you know, fast forward to now, um, maybe some handles for listeners is self-awareness is a superpower. I think as much knowing what it is you want to do, why you want to do it, where it's all going. I think Proverbs says, you know, there's wisdom in multitude of counselors. That's why I love talking to you and watching your channel, getting different perspectives, learning about things because there's how it looks on the front end, there's what's maybe happening on the back end, there's different lessons that happen. There's how it looks, but then there's the actual economics. And so they say in business, stay small, keep it all. What are you solving for? Are you solving for profit? Because if you just were like, media company is the cool thing to do, I think it's probably the cool thing to do is the wrong tale to anything you're doing. Like, Building a business is the cool thing to do. Like, I think there, what's what's like your inner motivation and in all of that. And so I do think I know myself pretty well in terms of the self-awareness piece. My intent, my aim is to steward every season of my life. I lean leadership. I wanna build teams. I wanna treat the teams well. I wanna create a great culture. I value wisdom more than money. So I value the process and the lessons. Then I'd probably overarchingly say media companies are not for the faint of heart and they're not for the majority. If you wanna sign up for the dynamics of, you know, people and interactions and personalities and how that could all happen. Um, and, and where we go next, we'll see. And so it's been a lot of lessons and I think Think we're seeing it play out. And then we're also seeing it play out different economic cycles as well. And at Think Media, we are bootstrapped. You know, we've never raised money. I don't think we plan to. We've looked at like, we could certainly hyper growth. I think with what we've already done, there's maybe somebody that would want to inject cash. Should we give over? But I'm like, we take some pretty bold moves and risks, but we also stay lean. So even this is some of calculated risks. Yeah. Other media companies are Patrick right now is playing real big, you know, and he's playing Very real aggressive. hyper growth. Yeah. So that's their self-awareness piece. So also saying, okay, can we, I look at even CNET 
And mm -hmm. that's a model that I've looked at. We have, I've looked at The Verge and Vox and CNET, not that I've studied them in depth, but I've thought like Think Media, if we're talking about tech reviews, if we just become like a trusted name in tech reviews, I couldn't tell you one personality on CNET. I would say all their videos about big screen TVs are great, whether it's like a guy or a girl speaking or whatever. I'm just trying to get the information. So to me, that becomes like a sustainable business. But then I also see the importance of actual personalities that might connect when people do have connections. Upsides and downsides to everything, as you mentioned in the Nate Black situation, because when personalities grow, where does it go next? Bro, that's a crazy field. So I'm kind of here for it and maybe some nuggets in there could help the individual think through self-awareness of what are you trying to build? Why are you trying to build it? Where do you see it all going? You know, where would you like it to go? Are you just copying a trend or looking at what somebody else is doing? Do you have your inner reasons for why it is that you're doing that? And then from there, you know, you make the best plan possible. And let me just finish this long rant by saying, I'm a small town kid, college dropout that went from creator to trying to be a CEO. Bro, like it's massive learning. I've made a ton of mistakes. It's constant learning, trying to skill up and add to my skill set as much as possible. So I, one, understand that there's also a lot at stake because there's 25 people that work at Think Media right now. Ian just had a babies on, you know, paternity leave. I, I take seriously that like what weighs on my shoulders, my decisions, my mistakes, my things, they can affect a lot of people. And so I don't want to be cavalier with what I'm doing ever and really steward our business our customers, our community, our integrity, all that, that stuff. But it's a learning curve for sure. And so every season I'm getting nuggets and then trying to just say, what's stewardship for a leader? It's your time, it's your money, it's your resources, it's your people. It's saying, hey, what do we have? What's on the landscape? What's coming next? As far as looking down the road, stay optimistic, but also stay paranoid and then try to make the best educated decision for the next season. And so that's what I'm always trying to do. I love it, man. And I know that touched on a number of things here. I've got a, a ton of notes and we're not gonna be able to get to every single one of them. You know, one of the things that you touched on was challenges, the challenges of growing a media company. I've watched you kind of grow up, right? Growing up in your YouTube evolution and hiring new people, hiring talent to work with you on the channel and that presents issues and you know again like we look at Ben Shapiro Candace Owens thing and it's created this huge rift in the Daily Wire uh, ecosystem there are people who are pro Candace people who are pro Ben big problems anytime there's a shakeup on any of the major news channels there it leads to big problems Tucker Carlson getting fired from Fox News huge problems they probably lost a massive amount of their audience when Tucker left so one of the things and obviously part of the reason for having this conversation we talked a couple weeks ago about safety nets and things that you can put in place to ensure that as you're growing your media company you're doing it in a safe way both for you and for for the creators that you're bringing on, you were tagged a bunch in the Nate Black video just specifically because of what was going on with Nolan at the time. And I don't want to get into all the back end stuff, you know, with Nolan, but the question that I want to ask you is what was your biggest learning from that? What was the biggest thing that you learned, took away from losing people on your team who are part of that media company? What mistakes do you feel like you made? What do you feel like you are going to do different next time? Yeah. So, I mean, it's a great question. I think the biggest takeaway would be, I got two. First, I think that Candace Owens, Tucker Carlson, someone that's been at Think, I think you're right. Like, okay, so part of your audience might leave people, shots fired in all directions online, stuff can happen. Back to like the ministry analogy, or just that's because I spent a lot of time in ministry. Yeah. It's just a church splits. There's church splits, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like actually very common. So it's like your youth pastor uh, starts talking to people and then plants a church across the street and takes half the congregation or all the congregation, you know, whatever. I think the first thing to really consider though is like you can't as a leader, let fear be your driver. Amen. And I actually think deep down, fear is what keeps a lot of people from, if you will, growth. The way to put that would be, well, what if you have somebody that comes on your platform, builds their platform on yours, and then someday leaves? What do you mean, what if? It probably will happen. Mm -hmm. Um, what if somebody comes and, you know, builds on your platform and then like doesn't really follow through on what they committed to or 
or ends up competing with you or doing something else, it's also like, no, nah, it probably will happen. So I think maybe from the get go, I wasn't living in any delusion. I didn't want something like that to happen, but this isn't like CNN, media, television, YouTube, social media last 20 years. This is like human nature in, in history. Yeah. <laughs> yep, know? yep. Like, right, so. Yeah. So I think that goes back to kind of self-awareness of like, and on a much smaller scale, it's like, what if you develop your team members and pay them to work for you and pay them money and trips and education and online courses and insider information that they learn at your company and all that stuff, they quit someday, go take all that and then become your rival. And then the, the adage is, you know, basically, what if you develop your team members and they leave? And then it's like, what if you don't develop your team members and they stay? So the biggest takeaway, number one, is like, I think from a leader's perspective, and no doubt about it, I've made mistakes with Nolan and Omar, or anybody else, like we both have. And, uh, you know, there's two sides to every story. But I think that uh, my macro hope is leaders create more leaders, they don't create more followers. Leaders create leaders. And hopefully, if people can add, be a net positive to society and build and provide for their families and they're better for it. Like I hope if people spend time with me, they spend time with Think, they leave better, you know? So biggest takeaway number one, and even now being in the last couple months of some big transitions, it's like, you know, you just can't be led by fear and then of course you want to have lessons and takeaway. Second big lesson and takeaway would be clarity in terms of clear contracts, yep. clear if this then that, clear expectations. And one, as the leader, no matter what the truth is, it's all my fault. And as the leader, no matter what anybody else has done, I'm going to take extreme ownership. And so if I look back with grace though, over just this, the past, I told kind of the story, for example, with Omar, it was so organic. I mean, we're talking like just handshake type stuff, like no contracts, like just because it even too, it was like, Hey, you want to come shoot a video? Now you're shooting videos and that, you know, whatever. And if there's probably been something that, because it's also not how I'm wired, this has been, I don't love paperwork. I don't know who does other people are probably better at it, you know, but that's probably one of the biggest lessons is to, I think, define the relationship. I think on a more regular, certainly more regular basis than we did redefine and re-clarify the relationship as it evolves. If it's not written, it's not real. Yep. Get things in writing. I think what's also hard is now, I mean, talk about this present era, like we've learned a lot. And as we are engaging in relationships with new people, in a way, everything that's kind of happened has been incredible because it just helped us really think through things we that we wouldn't have seen. Like you didn't really know to ask. You didn't even know that that was also going to be a scenario that played out. You didn't know if somebody was going to like have a competitive business that they were pitching while they're working at your business, but also some things that maybe was like it was a little bit lax a few years ago, but as things are getting more like concrete and they sign some things, but they're in violation of that. If you aren't like really making that clear, like it's just a lot of lessons. And so I do try to have as much grace over the past for, I will hold myself to the highest standards, but also give myself grace and others to say, yeah, like we for certainly could have had clearer conversations, getting, gotten things in writing. And that lesson is, is huge. The other thing to consider is that's not gonna solve everything. That's not gonna prevent, I'm sure they had great contracts with, Candice, but obviously stuff's going to happen. And that goes back to the fear thing. I think you still got to, you know, make moves and just know stuff can happen. There could be disagreements and things. So, um, you know, going forward, you know, finally we're in talks with somebody right now. It's been awesome. They say hire slow, you know, fire fast. And so we're in talks with somebody uh, right now and bro, the amount of clarity we have yeah. just from the lessons. And one of the biggest things we're talking about is we're starting with the end in mind. We are talking and actually Good. you and our, our conversation a couple of weeks ago was even like that at the start, we're asking, how do we want this to end? Perfect. And how can we end well? And that's where I point grace over it is just like one, should we have had those conversations? conversations in the past for sure to the grace is like, how do we even know? You know, like you, you sort of like, I don't even, I can't even imagine what this would have turned into where I really could have grown as a leader though. It's been so much more assertive at a regular clip. And there were certainly conversations too, by the way. I mean, not to, in a lot of verbal conversations, I think what you put it in writing, so you go, go back and forth, that's, uh, you know, obviously so important. And that's a big one and that's a big deal. And then I think thinking through terms, and by the way, now as we get into this whole non-compete thing, which is radically changing, yep. and it's it may or may not, it could be overturned, different things. I think that also knowing the difference between non-compete, non-solicitation, non yeah. but also, also non-compete being a post being at work, I think you certainly can hold, or not only certainly, 
your, if your team is actually working for you and competing and in violation of, of their contract, that's not going away, right? We're talking about once they leave. That's a whole new era as well. So it's a lot. So I think, yeah, in summary, I think you just can't move with fear in business in general. Or if you are going to, I'm also avoiding overcorrecting. And I, I think I'm in a good place as far as my heart in terms of like, if something like if some transitions happen or if you know somebody's betrayed you or some different things that have happened, your propensity could be to overcorrect and be afraid of moving forward like what but it's like no i mean let's learn let's do our best going forward with these lessons and then it makes me think of you know i heard that apple a huge corporation as we know i think they get sued every day not that there's any lawsuits going on between anybody but like they get sued like every day yeah. like you know multiple times a day <laughs> you could look at trump right now and you could think about not only with like convictions and other things like he, when is he not being sued or whatever you know it's just simply saying and i just go bro i can't the level of anxiety I would have if I was in his shoes, like no matter what people think about it, just like, bro, how can he even keep his head on straight to do what he's doing with the amount of pressure? I think that part of it at kind of this level. So I think I've been going through just growth of the evolution of things being like homies hanging out, making videos, to things becoming more professionalized, to things changing, to to the mix of all that stuff. And then just moving into a new era where that's a reinvention of ourselves as, as we do this next time around. So next time around, we're trying to do it smarter, trying to put things down on paper, definitely trying to, I don't know if I mentioned it, but you gotta get actual experts involved. The reason that's tough is lawyers are expensive, employment <laughs> attorneys, just so that you can actually make sure you've got good documentation, clarity, somebody that knows even what they're talking about. And so back to the whole media company thing, you gotta be at a certain level of scale to even go through the process of uh, doing this right and the cost and the overhead of the onboarding and offboarding of media company talent, that whole thing. And I don't think the weird hybrid world we're, we're living in where former CEO Susan at YouTube said, creators are creating the next gen of media companies, but they're also weird. Like if you're making a couple hundred K a year, a million. yeah, you should get a lawyer, but like that's expensive and your money's tight. And so you are just doing handshakes. So I, that's why I encourage yeah. people. You're being, you gotta be careful of just thinking it's a homie and thinking, and they say, you know, the problem with partnerships is they, they all sink. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, you know, Steve Wozniak and jobs, like if it wasn't for partnerships, what's the guy wrote a book, the startup and uh, he has a podcast. Uh, he actually has a whole chapter that like the only way you're gonna make it work is, is partnerships. And there's no official partners and it hasn't been at Think Media my wife and I co-own the company, but no doubt about it with love and respect to people that have helped us build over the years, like Heather and Omar and Nolan and different people. These have been like key players. It's interesting to think about the dynamic of making the relationship as clear as possible, thinking about how it could end, trying to have just open, transparent conversations, you know, doing your best um, and getting as much as possible on paper. But again, to that point, it, yeah, if you're at day one, you probably should get some real expertise in legal. I coached somebody the other day who is in a YouTube channel, I'll kick it back to you. Yeah. But they're in a YouTube channel with somebody else. By the way, another one, and I'm like, I think about Benji Travis and I, mm -hmm. our relationship is great. Video influencers, that was his own lesson, 50-50. And it's actually still there. And the book is in that entity and like we're making a ton of royalties because it just like, it kind of does its thing. And that's that project is paused. We learned a lot there. There's all kinds of things I learned, like a lot of people saying they would never do 50-50. They would only do at least 51, so you know who it really is that's got weight or the responsibility. And then how do you unwind this and how do you unwind the partnership? And I was coaching some guys, and this is just so common. So in all of this, hoping to, if there's value in this conversation, it's like, I was like, hey, do you guys have any real agreement about where this goes next? And it was just two people who started a YouTube channel together, yeah. wanted to be creative, on a mission together. Have you thought about where, if this happens or that happens? And, and, and in one coaching call, I asked the person like 20 questions and he had like, he's like, dude, I haven't even thought about any of those questions. And that only really came because of just going through this process to the you know best of my ability, certainly making mistakes along the way. But those would be some of the lessons. Try to think through as many things as possible. Start with the end in mind. Don't just think about the start in the middle of the relationship, but think about how maybe it might end. And I think even maybe expect there, this whole idea of like, maybe you'll be with us for life, but probably not. So let's try to plan a way that there could be a win-win on the exit yeah. and that we actually think all, and that's so weird. Like we're just starting, we're all pumped at the beginning. Let's just talk about how this is gonna end. Yep. 
and what, what winning could look like and then continue to have those relationships. And then at the end of the day, people are gonna make their own choices, stuff's gonna happen. So you can't move with fear, but as much as possible, you wanna move with wisdom. And those are some of the lessons I've learned. You know, man, um, and I, I really appreciate your time today and thanks so much for going through all this. There's so much to unpack in all of this and I, I feel like you and I could just have a discussion for days on the creator economy just because virtually there are very few other people in the world <laughs> who are as well versed in this stuff. I think the thing that is really important, and I know we talked about it a few weeks ago in a different conversation where it's like every relationship that is not, hopefully not your spouse, right? It, it will end at some point. <laughs> and, and even when, you know, when you get married, somebody's going to die. Everybody dies. It, it happens. So things are going to uh, ultimately cease to, relationships cease to happen. And, and if you have like you say, all of that clarity up front and you have a direction, you have a plan, you have a path, which requires thinking. It requires thinking 10 steps ahead. But if you have that all set up in the beginning, you'll end up a, a much better place. I love not only your tenacity, but your willingness to keep trying. Because uh, again, going back to problem solution, it's like we're here to solve problems. Every time we solve a problem, we, we stack a new skill. And by the time we reach the end of our life, we've got all of these skills that have been utilizing and stacking. It makes us dangerous. It makes us incredible forces for good or for, you know, for bad for some people. But for the most part, like we're stacking skills as we go. And I think that if we avoid these difficult conversations, these difficult uh, problems that we have to solve, and we kind of hide ourselves in a box, we're going to be missing out on so much opportunity that we can have if we're willing to put ourselves out there. So I guess my point is, is I appreciate you for being a force for good, a role model, an example to people around you who are interested in building businesses and, and seeing you struggle, go through stuff, pick yourself back up and do it all over again. That's what's inspiring, man. And so I appreciate it. And thanks so much for joining me today and bearing it all out there for everybody to hear. I think it's super important and valuable for the, for the audience. Well, I appreciate you and uh, love everything you're you're doing as well. And yeah, we should definitely uh, chop shop in the future because these are, it's a weird world. This whole YouTube world, yeah. all the de generations, you've seen it, the eras of VidCon, the, I was thinking 2014, I think I was at VidCon with Benji Travis. Yeah. I remember we ran into Tim Ferriss <laughs> just sitting in a session and Ryan Holiday, because they were just Crazy. there to learn about, you know, whatever. And now, yeah, all this different stuff. I know that uh, more than anything, man, life's about learning and it's about the journey and uh, learning from your mistakes. Um, and I appreciate your kind words and the opportunity to uh, connect with your community. Thanks for everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime. All right, brother. Thank you so much and uh, take care. All right, fam. I hope you guys liked that one. If you guys want to see the video that kind of kicked this all off, I highly recommend watching the Nate Black video. It's right here. We'll catch you on the next one. Later. Bye.